in uh, down and dirty, uh, the, the truth of how this plays out, it's, it's emotions. It's emotion. And so different emotions for different people are more prominent, but everyone's going to face shame, anger, self-doubt, uh, frustration, fear, and sadness and grief. These, these just come one way or another. Now, for some people, one is far more prominent than the other um, or a couple of them. And often it's related to how you were set up before. So if you had four, you didn't even maybe consciously do any of this, but if you had fortified yourself against fear for some reason, a lot of times survivors do that. Survivors have to learn to survive. Uh, they, they have a survival persona that worked really well for you and was likely necessary, uh, fully necessary for how you took yourself to be for years of your life. Um, and what that, one of the things that filters out is fear is not really helpful for a survivor, generally speaking. Um, um, uh, a healthy um, or even hyper vigilance about your environment is very helpful, but fear itself doesn't particularly be, isn't particularly helpful often because if you, I don't know how you grew up at all, but people who grew up in like, in a, say in a very a violent environment, they actually uh, know that fear turns you into a victim. Like a lot of times victimizers look for fear to know who the victims are going to be. Right. Um, and so showing fear can actually put you at risk. Um, and in, in environments like, you know, intense environments, uh, potentially violent environments and so forth. So a lot of times we learn to, to totally suppress fear. It's just not valuable. Um, and, uh, anger, similarly, uh, it, it, it's suppressed in a certain way, but it, it, it tends to come out in other ways that we don't always notice or don't want. Um, but it, it often comes out in a, in a sense of control. It, we learn to control our environments or control the situation or control the people we're around through various means, through our personality, through anything, actually, through being funny, through being um, putting ourselves in a position where we are in control, um, practically speaking. So we, it tends to come out as control. It's the kind of thing other people often feel more than you feel. Um, so, so there are people who have a lot of repressed anger and a lot of people around them know it, but they somehow don't believe it themselves. But when you wake up, you suddenly can't do that anymore, or at least not to the degree you did. It starts coming up and you're like, fucking, where's this anger coming from? Right. feels like fire. It feels like rage. Yeah. Um, feels like you want to burn the fucking world down. Right. That's it's, it's intense stuff like this kind of anger. Right. Um, so, uh, so part of, part of what's helpful is just knowing where this came from. Right. Uh, and you may have to go back. I mean, you may have to do some specific inquiry about stuff in your past, about childhood, about things that, um, where you're ultimately where your boundaries were violated initially is where this, you learn to repress anger. Um, you may or may not have to do that. Uh, um, but often it goes there just so you know. Uh, and as much as we often are hooked up, not want to go back to those places and times and moments, what we find, what I've found, what a lot of people I know who've gone through this have found is when you actually do it in the right way, which means like with your eyes completely open and actually hundred percent willing to feel, know, and see what actually happened and what, what went on in that moment. Um, it's, it's surprisingly transformative. Actually, it can release in a way that you never expected it could release. You can find yourself in a, in a sense of, um, freedom from that binding that you'd actually didn't know was even possible. And it's not even on the spectrum of awakening. It's a different sort of thing. Um, and I've seen that happen. So, so that's a possible thing you may have to address at some point or, or, or may not, but it, it probably will come up in some form. Um, but also even in, in your current life, your current experience, there, there may be places where that anger comes up again and again. And toward a certain person, toward a certain uh, entity, toward the government, toward any, anything, toward yourself. Um, and being able to just really sit down and go, okay, what is actually happening here? What is actually occurring? Um, be, f the first step is you have to be willing to feel it. You have to be willing to literally let that anger come through the body. And that will be intense. And it, but it's okay. Especially if you're by yourself. It's, it's like, just let it be there. You know, let it, let it roll through. Um, it's a firestorm. Uh, but once you're sort of okay with at least feeling it, um, and maybe you already are there, uh, then the inquiry can be simple. Just, okay, well, what, what is the view of the anger itself? What is, how does anger experience truth right now? How does anger experience reality? What if I just said, maybe the anger's view right now is, is the right view. It's the only right view. Let's give it that let's give it its due. Let's see the world through its eyes. How is it seeing this moment? How is it seeing things 
around me? How does it perceive me as your, your identity, your, your, um, practical identity? What is it? What is it? How does it perceive you? How does it perceive your, your, your partner, your friends, you know, how does it perceive the world? Um, starting to actually feel into it and know it, um, and give it its due. Um, that goes a long, long, long way because one way of saying this is that emotion in emotions, whether they're intense or not so intense, whether they're repressed or whether they're fully in consciousness, they're, they're life forms. They're, 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 and, and I think rightly so, um, they, they have defense mechanisms. They, they have a sense of a right to be, um, <clears throat> they have the will to be, and they're trying to express something you could say, uh, or at least they want to express without being, um, repressed or without being, uh, distorted through our physiology, through our thoughts and so forth. Um, and I, I believe that's almost literally true or essentially literally true. And they may be, some of these emotions, uh, are, um, anger, for instance, it's, it's ancient. It starts to feel ancient when you get really connected to it. It's older than you. It's older than me. It's older than my family. It, it goes back a long way in human consciousness. It's, it's been, it's developed an identity over generations and gener over eons. And, um, and you can learn a lot from it by, by really embodying it, really spending some time just opening the door to it and just saying, anger, you've been here a long time. I don't even know. I didn't even know who you were for a long, I didn't know you're here. And I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I just didn't even know. I didn't notice I was, I was in survival mode. So now I know you're here and I can feel it. Um, and I'm, it's kind of scary. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you're going to do, but I, but I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to feel, I want to know what your life force is. I want to know what you are about. I want to know what you want. I want to know what, how you see the world. Um, and when you, I think when you approach it with that kind of respect and dignity, any life force that's in you, um, it, a different order of like love comes online, right? It's, um, you, you can learn things from, from your own emotions that you, that will surprise you. I mean, I have for sure. And, um, because again, they have experience beyond us, like Eckhart Tolle calls, you know, the pain body. And I think that's a good way of saying it because it, it is sort of an entity and it is ancient. It's it goes beyond us. And it, it, it knows how to survive. It knows how to hide in people. It knows how to transfer from person to person, often through violence, um, through various forms of violence. Um, and, uh, and it knows how to survive and be alive, but you, but it doesn't mean that it's fundamentally wrong or evil or shouldn't be because there's nothing that's fundamentally wrong or shouldn't be.